Right, I believe we are live. How's it going, everybody? I'm waiting for my screen to buffer over here. Nate Mumford, as always, Director of Sales Engineering here at RCS. Hope everybody is well. Hope you are good. Hope your family is safe and healthy as well. As we uh, give a couple seconds here to go live, I can see people slowly chiming in. How's it going? All right, so another installment. It is Thursday. I went to write March, but it is April 2nd, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern time here. I'm in still uh, at home in uh, Danbury, Connecticut, hanging out. And um, good morning, everybody. So I thought we would do, once again, another installment of our Q&A in the Times of Remote Workflows. And again, the concept here is trying to talk about... <clears throat> Some of the different ways that you know we can help you out here at RCS. It could be whatever you want. So from big broad questions, maybe there's a certain workflow you're looking to achieve. Maybe there's a type of remote workflow that you don't know is there, and we're trying to here to help you let you know that that's something we can help you with. Again, I'm a big believer here of you don't know you can do something if nobody tells you you can do it or it exists, right? So that's why we're here, talking about different solutions, um, different things you can do in regards to that. So um, if you wanted to chime in, I have my comment section here. You can also always do live at rcsworks.com, or you can uh, message us directly. That can work too. Um, either way, reach out to us. We'll answer some questions for you and uh, all that good stuff. So um, as I said, just want to check in, make sure everything's good on your end. If you do have any workflow questions, let us know. As you can tell, I'm clearly stalling to get more people in here as well. So um, before I forget, I want to talk about some things that we have going on here at RCS. Uh, just a reminder for you, we do have the uh, different packages available for remote workflows. We have the Zeta. Um, that's going to be the Zeta Remote Studio. Think of Zeta Remote Studio as essentially a local version of Zeta. That includes the multi-track editor. That includes voice tracking capabilities as well as to insert audio. And that is uh, also priced for our budget friends who are trying to, of course, handle the budget as well as the workflows here during the time of Corona. So um, on top of that, we also have Zeta Cloud-based disaster recovery, just so you know. Um, that is our you know first ever automation in the cloud that is right in the cloud. It's not a virtual machine or a VM. It is actually Zeta written uh, on and for Amazon Web Services. That includes the security of AWS um, on top of the coding itself. Uh, very, very powerful tool. If you don't know about it just yet, very briefly just talking about it, you can essentially take all of your logs, your metadata, your audio, and your backups, send that to the cloud. That's right, the cloud up there. Everything done is in real time. So if I save an asset, that's gonna be done in real time to Zeta Cloud. On top of that, if I wanted to, let's say um, there's some kind of disaster, something happens, maybe your engineer can't be the one to actually go in the studio and fix something. You can go to your phone, right? Go to your phone, you enable Zeta Cloud, it's a URL, it's not an application, there's no downloading each time. You just go to the URL, you sign in, and then you can essentially you know, uh, activate or enable your Zeta stream. And from there, it just goes to wherever you want it to go to. That could be a, um, a machine at the transmitter site. That could be just a URL, digital URL to your streaming provider, whatever that is. So um, very, very powerful tool. Also want to mention that we're offering a year, a year. We're offering one free Zeta to go license, a seat, if you will, for every uh, Zeta Cloud disaster recovery purchased. So if you're interested in that, reach out to your local sales representative. We'll be happy to help you out there too. Uh, again, very, very powerful. I'm monitoring my, uh, my questions over here. So if you do want to comment and answer your questions, we can do that. Or we can talk about some workflows and all of that good stuff. I um, want to point out too, um, a great article over our friends at Radio World that's happening right now. Um, are also one of our clients is Wyoming Public Media. You can see here that they're talking about essentially uh, Paul's experience with um, Zeta to go and some of his hardware choices as well. So we want to provide you as many kind of cases and examples of how users are interpreting RCS products and then applying it to real world solutions. So again, that's uh, here on Radio World and I can go ahead and just I'm just going to post this here in the comments section so in case people want to access it they can that's the link there so in case you know 
Um, again, any questions, comments, put that in here. But again, Wyoming Public Radio, um, this is their overall game plan for Zeta to go and all of that good stuff. So I thought I would... Uh, <laughs> I got worried there. I thought it was a Dallas Cowboys for a second. Uh, we're New York and also a Packers fan. Um, so uh, that is the uh, Zeta world there. I thought I'd also briefly talk about um, some of our products here. And I know from past experience, I'm going to zoom in on this to, let's see if 200% works. I believe that should look very well for everybody. Um, so this is a little quick kind of spreadsheet we made internally here at RCS. Kind of talk about the different products and things um, that we can help you with and things you can do. So for example, um, go through here, come of the next gen legacy products. Um, we have iPush, RCS Remote, and Next Gen Remote Studio. So if you are a next gen user, uh, many people have called us about getting their next gen remote studios set up. Um, if you are interested in any kind of remote studio, any kind of installation, just be aware that you know we have lots of people still calling us looking to install some stuff. And we wanna make sure we get you in there first in line two. So if you are thinking about it, definitely reach out now and start the process so we can help you and put you on that installation list. So we have iPush uh, RCS Remote. That is the Mac OS X kind of application uh, for next gen, okay? So those are just Mac only. They're part of the App Store for the Mac App Store. And you have to essentially download them. They are free, just so you know. So if you're a next gen client, perhaps that's something that we can actually you know, help you with um, and get those configured. Um, I also have help documents too. If you are an engineer and you're just chiming in and you're wanting to know more about iPush or RCS Remote, we can definitely help you out there as well. So I have some installation, configuration, all that good stuff. I have uh, PDF documents that I can shoot you over as well. So if you are curious about that, um, I can also talk about that here. And just to briefly show you, because why not? We're here. I can. Um, I'll just go to very briefly show you those PDFs. Um, I'll just move this over here for right now so you can see my clean screen. And then I'm going to open my documents here to show. I have, um, and if you are an engineer, I just want to point out, I've been accumulating different help guides, um, also some tutorial things on my end. So if it's something that you do want to um, discuss or get some, um, some uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm missing the word here for documentation. Um, if you do want to have some documentation and some reading material, let me know. I'll be glad to help you out, shoot those your way. Um, this right here is the PDF I have from the RCS remote. So you can see here, it's a very descriptive guide on some next gen requirements. Um, you know, the remain windows and what kind of the screenshots look like here. So I'm just going to very briefly, I'm not going to go into all of this. I just want to show you some examples of what we have available for you in regards to documentation. And you can see here, <clears throat> this involves configuration. This is how to's, this is different things you can do inside of this. And this particular one is RCS remote. I will probably say that if you're looking to play around with both of these, um, probably RCS Remote is the first one you want to go for. Um, iPush is really just kind of recording some audio and pushing it to your next gen system. The RCS Remote is more of a, you know, controlling certain things. So you can see here based on our little checklist, um, Remote Studio can have simple audio production. You can voice track, real time start and stop, change the mode, hotkeys, um, and then just simple log modifications, moving things up and down. Whereas the iPush is really, you're just pushing audio to your next gen server. And that's the simple audio production aspect. Um, as I said, you can always comment. I got some from Paul here. Um, app for us of the next gen. So Paul is asking any chance of getting a standalone app for an iOS for Zeta to go so we can use our iPads for voice tracking. So Paul, you should be able to use your iPads right now. So one of the reasons we went with Zeta to go is because you can actually voice track um, and you can actually do that as an, not an app, but a URL. So on your iPad, what you wanna do is you wanna go to your normal uh, URL. You will need a VPN, obviously, but you can still access that Zeta to go URL from your iPad and then from there, everything is, is there. You can go and do your, your tables and everything like that, all your modules open. Um, so you should, and we do have lots of users um, doing that as well. So uh, if you want, I can poke you afterwards, Paul, and, and try to set it up. Um, I would, 
jokingly grab my iPad that I usually have for NAB. Um, for all those who have been to NAB in the past, one of the things that we do is I have my, uh, my iPad with me and I essentially do a voice track from my iPad and show it across um, into Zeta, how it lands into Zeta. So you can definitely do that. Obviously be aware for your iPad is if you have any kind of voice tracking, quality of the microphone comes into play as well as the VPN access. So as long as you have VPN and you have the, the microphone, you're pretty much in good shape. So uh, again, Paul, if you want, I'll talk to you afterwards. But the reason we don't have an iOS app for Zeta to go is because you don't need one. Think of it this way. I can jump on any device and either have the VPN connection or whatever it is, and I can just go ahead and boom, boom, boom. I can voice track from numerous devices anytime without downloading or any of that stuff. So um, again, it's more flexible by having the URL because then you can use Safari, you can use uh, Chrome, Firefox, all of that good stuff. So hope that answered your question, Paul. Thanks for chiming in. Um, by the way, speaking of which, um, one of the topics I want to talk about today, I'll get back to that uh, product list in a second, but since we transitioned into here, uh, I want to talk about some different scenarios in regards to Zeta to go because as Paul was saying, you know, we do have, you know, uh, it, it is a URL and many different people interpret Zeta to go in many different ways, which is great. That's what we want. We want to talk about the flexibility of Zeta to go. So one of the things that um, I've, I've been uh, getting a lot of questions on is, you know, best performance, best configuration, and all of that. So I'll be perfectly honest. Let's let's talk about that workflow and talk about, you know, going from microphone to your source and then so on and so forth. And as I'm talking about this, I might as well just log in. Um, and so <clears throat> one of the things we talk about is which browser you want to utilize. Um, I'll be very blunt and honest. It really depends on your environment. Um, we have a lot of users that have different network um, solutions and, and domain restrictions and all of that. So it really depends on what you have in regards to you know, your network and all of that. So some users, I mean, we usually kind of say Chrome or Firefox. It's kind of the normal default for us. Um, so if you are a Chrome or Firefox user, this should be working great for you. If you have a laptop, uh, sometimes you, know, you, you go to one of the stores, you buy a quick laptop, you throw it on, or you have a laptop that's like eight years old, maybe your RAM is not as uh, up to snuff as other machines. So, you know, let's just say you're using a four gig um, laptop for RAM and you're accessing your Zeta to go via Chrome. Chrome takes up a lot of space. Um, so if you did want to, let's say, you know, if you had some RAM issues, maybe use something like Firefox, for example, that pops, possibly uses less RAM than that of Chrome. So you can see where these environmental factors start coming into play. It's definitely not that you won't get the you know good performance out of Zeta to go. It's more so finding the best performance out of Zeta to go. Um, I also want to mention too. There's uh, Tim Lee over in Australia um, does a great Zeta to go video that we've posted here on our Facebook page, um, talking about voice tracking in very fun, quirky ways, and it's really, really a great video to watch. It's super quick. Um, nicely produced as well. So shout out to uh, to Tim Lee for uh, creating that video for us. And uh, if you want to watch that, it's again it's like two minutes. It's great. It's funny. It's very informative as well. Um, and uh, yeah, you want to make sure you have a proper mic source, and you want to make sure you have the best quality to go and utilize. So if you are a Mac user, just so you know, if you are a Mac user, you want to use Safari. Uh, long story short, uh, essentially Mac had an update on the last OS. And essentially, we had some restrictions in regards to what pieces of software can utilize hardware with the uh, with the um, Mac OS. And so, we prefer right now and recommend that if you have any type of Mac, I would use Safari for that too. Just so you know. So, if you have Mac, use Safari. Otherwise, if you have Windows, Chrome, and Firefox should should be fine. The thing too about people they call in a lot about is don't forget that Chrome has a lot of extensions on it. Chrome has a lot of restrictions. Um, I, I think we had somebody once uh, tell us, you know, like uh, Zeta to go wasn't uh, wasn't working for whatever reason. We jumped in, and turns out she had essentially privacy mode turned on, and it was blocking any kind of internet because she wanted to have nothing on there. Um, you can do that in Chrome, but be aware, you know, if you do all that and have all these restrictions in Chrome, 
you're also restricting access to your Zeta to go. So what I would do, if in my opinion, if, if you're worried about regular internet browsing history or wherever that may be, you know, use a secondary browser for your Zeta to go browser. Keep that open, less restrictions. You can utilize that whenever you have Zeta to go. Otherwise, you're going back to your normal Chrome and you're just using normal internet and browsing. So something along those lines. Um, we had some people call in about, you know, best kind of microphone to utilize for Zeta to go. So, I mean, I have right now um, this little blue guy snowball that I've had lying around over here. Uh, it's just a simple USB mic. I think it's got some compression built into it. And the, uh, the client was asking us essentially, do I need to have a microphone processor associated with my USB microphone? And again, it really depends on what your configuration is. If I have, let's say, a USB mic, and that goes to my Zeta to go, I record Zeta to go, that lands back into Zeta proper, right? Fall in that workflow. So if I have back in Zeta proper, don't forget Zeta in itself has its own EQ features, uh, configuration, stations. You know, we have audio analysis done here, and we also have the uh, normalization done and the EQ done on the Zeta side. So just very briefly, just showing you here, configuration, stations. Um, I go to RCS Hot AC, and then when I go to here, you'll see there's a normalization tab. That allows me to go and control certain settings. When I take that file from Zeta to go and it lands in Zeta proper, the audio analysis is then done at that level, right? So off the bat, we have some normalization going on. From there, once it plays out, let's just say you record your Zeta to go in mono. Well, it could still be pointing out to left, right, to the feed and the board, right? And it's still going to play out as both. So then from there, if it goes to your transmitter site, most users have at the transmitter site an actual processor there before it goes over the air. So now you're talking about that same voice track, right? Goes to your Zeta, Zeta EQs it, normalizes it. Then your Zeta output from your board goes to some kind of processing too, and then over the air. My question for you is essentially, okay, how does it sound? Do you like the quality of the mic or do you not like the quality of the mic? If you say, well, it's fine, then guess what? It's fine. You got your processing is taking over the heavy lifting of the quality of your microphone. If you're saying it's not very good, and again, I use the example as we're joking around Nate at NAB, um, I use my iPad. I just go like this and talk. And if I use my iPhone too, like, hey, it's Nate, WRCS FM, this is so-and-so. Uh, if I do that, uh, it sounds really bad. It sounds like you're on a phone. And guess what? If you take an MP2 and you convert it to a wave, there's nothing you can do to that MP2 or that new wave file because you've clipped the peaks. There's nothing you can do about that. It's going to be a low quality. So that's my question for you is, do you need mic processing? Again, does it sound okay? You tell me. If it doesn't, you can go from there. Um, oh, I'm, I'm going to butcher your name. I'm so sorry. The Biso? Is that, I'm saying that right, the BSO? I apologize if I do. Um, the go live option, it doesn't disappear as a tile as of right now. I'll double check on that. I'm pretty sure it does disappear, but there is an activation on it too. So you do have to go, um, I'm trying to remember right here, is it, um, boom, 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 is it playback? Um, I'll remember the time I had, I know for a fact there's a go live checkbox and it's one of those things that I do because I set it and I forget it. Um, let me just play here as I answer that question for you. So to answer your question, um, right now it's there, it doesn't disappear, but you can deactivate it just so you know. And let me see if I can find some of the voice track settings. Um, it's something I always do that and then I, f I set it and forget it all those times. Um, I'll look into that here for you, and I'll, I'll direct message you and let you know where that setting is. Um, again, since we're here, by the way, uh, computer, sorry, configuration, and then system, there's voice track quick records. If you want to look at any kind of your heads and tails that comes into play a lot, there is Reset Your Zeta to Go heads and tails, as well as the Keep Live recordings. And then, of course, we have some of our configuration regards to what they look like um, for metadata and all that stuff, too. So if you are looking for heads and tails, if you're that classic rock station, you want to have a you know longer outro, uh, you can go and change that to 15 seconds and then the you know second one from there too. Uh, more questions, I love it, I love questions. Let's see, um, Josh is asking, um, 
any chance we can get some proper built-in mic processing or VST plugin options on the server side for them to go IVTs? Um, you know what? I'll look into that, Josh. So Josh essentially asking is if we have any RCS recommended VST plugin options on the server side for Zeta to go IVTs. Um, I'll look into that, Josh. Let me see what I can get. Um, I'll add my list. I'll, I'll write it down in a second. But again, I, I don't have any off the top of my head. I know that we have a lot of users who are um, who are using um, Zeta to go with some virtual processing. Um, I'll just get an actual list for you. Um, I will say, um, just to keep it easier, um, I know that we have some articles that we've been posting um, from different users. I can't remember if they included the, the virtual processing or not in them. If you might have missed it, that was um, Wyoming Public Media. I posted that earlier. The other one I have is this one here. I'm going to copy and paste that into here as well. This is another client we had from Radio World as well. If this loads up here, which it should, and I'll comment on there. Okay, so this is um, Henrik over in uh, Denmark. And again, talking about some of his configurations as well. I'm going to post that article here. And as this loads up here. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So that is, um, that's posting there. So that's that article as well um, for you. So if you want to reference that article too, those are just two examples. Otherwise, we have lots of stuff on our Facebook page for you too um, to list in regards to um, different options there. Um, but I will give you a list, Josh. Um, let's see. Bright City. Uh, why do I get distorted audio when I use audio MP3 and wave all as well? When I get distorted audio when I... When you say audio and MP3 and wave... Um, I, can you be more specific, uh, Bryce City? Um, I can definitely help you. If you want, I'll, I can DM you too after this, and you and I can troubleshoot some stuff and just see what's in there because it sounds like I need to get a little more information, and we can definitely help out. So I'll just poke you right after this. I'll, I'll direct message you, and we'll, we'll talk about it. Sound good? Um, all right. So Josh again. Um, mm -hmm. So Josh, then we have our own processing plugins uh, that can utilize – Process IVTs, IVTs. I got you. I'm encouraging to do processing on them. Yeah. So and, and there's there is some settings here in regards that it to go. Just so you know, um, I can go to my layout here. I'll change my library to IVT. There is some settings here. There's actually more in the next version in uh, Zeta 5.20.1. I believe that's release is going to be in May. Just so you know, uh, if not the very first week in July. Um, so if I go over here, you can see there's display settings, but there's also audio settings here. Um, you can change the audio input, the mono input channel, some simple rates in here. Um, uh, and then, of course, the voice track, the compressor is on there. Again, that's all relative based on your microphone. So, again, going back to that conversation. If you um, are a big fan of Spacebar, that's an option here. Um, the one button versus three button approach, that's in here as well. Um, those are kind of the big settings. Um, we have some users who have set it to go who utilize it on their end. Um, that's configuration and then global settings. So you can see here there's some sample bu stream buffer size, mono, different channels you can do. And again, the add dynamic presser to stream and audio chain. That's on there as well. Um, I will say, by the way, Josh, I will mention that for Zeta to go, uh, we do have Omnia and Sound 4 um, plugin processing done at the um, Zeta Cloud level. So as you record it and you save it, you apply the processing to there. So just throwing that there in regards to uh, any kind of plugins. I'll check in regards to the, um, I'm, I'm, I probably don't have a IVT plugins. I don't think we can utilize that. Obviously the locally you can. Um, if you do have a Zeta proper, if you are if you have let's say a Zeta remote studio or something, um, there is an option. I'll use my multi-track editor for here. Um, there is an option for you um, to utilize um, plugins here, just so you know. Um, if you go, I think I can get it right from here. Yeah, there's a VST plugin right there. So I'm just going to go and see if I can't grab a quick link for you here and drag it over and see if I can't apply that. 
I thought I have a couple hidden on my desktop. So right click on there, VST plugins. Yeah, I do have a couple random ones in here. These are some free ones that we had lying around. So if you have some stuff in there, uh, VST plugins definitely on Zeta proper. Um, I'll look into that for you too, Josh, and see. Uh, going through here, um, yeah, I'll hit you up, Paul. Um, and so see, so Paul was, uh, I got Paul there. Josh is good. Abu, um, it's the cloud-based radio. So, so Abu, in case you're chiming in, so um, essentially we have Zeta to go. The difference between Zeta to go and um, Zeta proper and Zeta cloud is that Zeta to go acts as seats. And you can have, we bundle them individually or you can get a discount if you get five seats. It doesn't matter the amount of users, right? I can have 10 users access five seats. And what that means is only five people at a time can be inside of Zeta to go. But whoever's in there, it's up to you. And by the way, if you're having some issues in regards to your clients, uh, clients, if you have some issues in regards to your staff, uh, right here, configuration, and then Zeta to go active sessions. If you go over here, you'll see who is logged on. And let's just say there's somebody in there who left their Zeta turned on and you have to voice track. You can always check that box and terminate that selected session. See that there? And if you do that, you can essentially kick that user out and then you can open up that seat. So again, using that example of 10 people with five seats, if somebody goes into voice track, they leave their Zeta to go open and they go, you know, cook lunch or something and you need to go and log on if you let's say you reach out to them and say hey are you still logged on they're like oh yeah sorry you can kick me out you can do that by going to configuration zeta to go active sessions and then kick them out from here so zeta to go is linked abu to your zeta proper any changes i do in zeta to go reflect instantly in my zeta proper itself i'm going to close my multi-track editor because we're moved on from there so if you do have, let's say, any audio you add, you, if you do it in Zeta to go, you can then, of course, uh, reflect that back in Zeta proper. And it's going to show you very briefly here how you can add audio because a lot of people have this question here. Uh, I'm just going to go and change my layout, open up my actual library itself here. I'm going to hit that little plus symbol on the top left of my library. And I'll show you briefly how we can upload some audio here as well. So the difference between Zeta to go, which is linked to Zeta proper, and Zeta cloud is that Zeta cloud is truly cloud-based automation. Um, think of your Zeta cloud as essentially a second additional market. So if I am in my studio, I have Zeta proper. If I have to work remotely because I'm, I'm social distancing, I can go at home, open up Zeta to go, connect to a VPN, and boom, any changes are done in real time. I can control this, as you can see in the background. I can control the on-air product. I can add new audio. And then all that's done to Zeta proper. If let's just say something happens, thus Zeta cloud-based disaster recovery, and Zeta proper goes down, that also means that Zeta to go goes down. Whereas um, we actually just got a client yesterday who called in. They got ransomware. It's, you forget that we're still going on and doing our thing, and people are still hacking us left and right. Um, and uh, if they did have Zeta cloud-based disaster recovery, they could have gone backed up all of their assets. That includes audio, logs, metadata, SQL backups. We have it on Zeta cloud. And when that's all good to go, you restore back to your database and you're back up and running. It's very, very efficient. Um, before I forget here, um, this is how we add audio and Zeta to go. I don't get people ask this. I can click to browse. Um, that's just a very straightforward window browse. I can click that Windows Media Player or some Windows, Windows Explorer folder will pop up. I can just drag and drop an element into there and boom, we're good to go. The other option too is I can also go and just simply drag and drop audio to this window. That's the second thing I can do is just simply drag and drop, save it. The um, audio analysis is still done from this level. And then once I save it, I can then do the marks and all that good stuff. And to show you very briefly, I'm not going to save my changes, but I am going to go and uh, open up a different. I'll just open a link up. I'll do a. Yeah, I'll do a link. Um, load up over here. Um, hopefully, Abu, that answers your question. I'll give you a proper, um, uh, proper explanation um, on Facebook after this is done. So, let's see here, Josh. Um, boom.
get them on full. Uh, Josh was saying any any chance we can get them on full Zeta over Zeta Cloud. Um, oh, I see from beforehand. Yeah, so so I'll, I'll poke you, Josh. Let's have a conversation after this, Josh, and you and I will talk about some Zeta to go and Zeta Cloud and some processing and all that stuff. We can definitely talk about that. Um, uh, how can you do live sessions? Uh, yes, um, Bryce City, I know you're on my list. Um, so just to recap over here, um, we are going to go and do this kind of these live sessions twice a week. Um, we thought it'd be very beneficial with all the craziness going on in the world. We just thought that we would be available for anybody who needs to ask questions, talk about workflows, and all that good stuff. So, uh, so Bri, what we're going to do is every – the first half of the week, we're going to float Monday or Tuesday. Um, I think we're going to shoot for next Tuesday at 2 p.m. We'll have an invite out there on our Facebook page. So Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. We'll probably do a next one of these. That's the very next one. And then we're going to do every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. So every Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern time, we'll go ahead and we'll do one of these uh, kind of just open sessions. And we'll just see where the comments take us um and talk about some workflows some examples whatever i can do to help out and all of that and we're going to try to do this for the foreseeable future as well so if you do have other questions um you can always watch the recap videos on our facebook page we're going to post these recordings i did remember to hit the record button uh we're going to put them too on rcsworks.com on our blog section so you can check that out um there's also a great website here that we created called remote work rcsworks.com and again I will post this here in the links to show you here I don't want to end my live video um, and this is a really cool little uh, tool to show you it's our first video we did of all of the Zeta to go products how you can start with the schedule with selector to go and just to recap here because we can if you have selector to go that's free part of your G selector contract so if you have G selector you have selector to go you can schedule your log you can edit your log in the editor. You can then also export your schedule. If you have Zeta, everything is live and integrated 100%. If you don't, we can configure that to export your, um, your log to your automation system. Then from there, we have Zeta to go. This is where you can control everything. And again, that's what you see right here. That's going to be essentially dropping an audio. You can see here I have my trim in, my little segue point. All my marks are here as well. I can add audio. I can voice track. I control the station. That's all done right from here. And just to show you, um, whoever asked that earlier, I can't remember who it was, but if I have my Zeta proper here and I have my Chrome, I just want to show you. Again, this is dynamic, so you'll see it will jump back to the window, whatever window frame it is. And if I go put this in manual mode, right, you'll see it change over there. And if I hit stop on here, my always joke I always say is, what do we have, everybody? We have dead air. That's right. We have dead air. So this is in manual mode. It stopped. Nothing is going on. I can essentially go back here. I can play the next option. Um, I can then go and take this back to manual, put it back into live assist or auto, and we're back on the air as well. All right. So that's some things you can do over there. Um, I'm going to go and back to my RCS workflow here. That set it to go. That's controlling it. We also have sales options for acquire to go. We just did a great video with Brian from New Zealand, our RCS acquire team over there. And if you are in the sales and looking to do some acquire to go stuff, definitely check out that video on our Facebook page. As we said, don't forget about Zeta cloud-based disaster recovery. That's the one in the cloud helping you out. You can stream and code all that good stuff. Um, let me go here and get some comments before I forget anybody. Um, so Josh got Bryce City. I'm going to text you afterwards. Um, Josh, I'm assuming that was the box in the editor. I'm assuming that's the VST plugin. Um, I'll comment on that. Um, glitching voice tracking to the go. I'm back in Chrome. So Tom Cox, um, yes, one of the things you missed is um, there is different configurations and Mac just released a brand new update in their last OS the operating system. Um, they they disabled the functionality where if you have a non a non Apple product software trying to access something hardware on the system, it blocks it from from working. So what we recommend while working on a patch right now, what we recommend is that if you're a Mac user, 
So Mac, iPhone, iPad, all that good stuff. If you're a Mac user, use Safari. That's gonna give you full control of your microphone and that should fix any of those blips in there, just so you know. So uh, Tom Cox was saying, having some issues recording, glitching and voice tracking on ZF Go on Mac with Chrome. Um, we tried adjusting the buffer size, which is a great point. Um, but um, essentially it's definitely the microphone being accessed there. So use Safari, that should fix that issue for you, uh, Tom. Um, yeah, so Josh, I, I'm just going through here this list of comments. Josh, yeah, the reason it's not there is you have to enable the folder. I'll look into how to set that up for you and send you some uh, documentation. Sean, yeah, so John, uh, Sean, thanks for checking in. Um, we're gonna do this essentially, as I said, twice a week. Um, next one's gonna be, we always, the first half of the week is a float. That's gonna be Tuesday at 2 p.m. And then every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern, we're gonna do this. So I'm gonna keep it open for the foreseeable future. If you wanna chime in, again, Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern, we're gonna keep doing this. Um, plus one, let's see here. Plan to use the trending platform to back support. Um, so yeah, so Josh and Tom, yeah. So that's the Chrome. I, I'm gonna go through these afterwards. I'll answer everybody here. Um, watch that space. Yep. Okay. Uh, Corey. Yeah. So Adrian joined. Hello, Adrian. How's it going? Um, thanks. Love these live streams. There's the comments. Um, yeah, Thomas, uh, I'm going to assume is it Tomas? Am I, am I guessing that right? Tomas? Uh, it's mostly asking, uh, will we ever cover G selector? Absolutely. Uh, what do you want to cover? Just comment and I'll, I'll talk about it briefly. So yeah, Tom, definitely we can do whatever you want. Um, how do you sub in a listener requested song for into the stream quickly switching over to Zeta next week? Um, I, I, into the stream, I'm assuming by streaming the sequencer, um, that could be literally, I can just go here, um, back to my home option. Um, I'm just doing streaming and recording. So I'm gonna give my computer a couple seconds here to catch up, but that's as simple as everything there. Um, uh, Mitchell is just drag and drop. So if I'm using Zeta to go, all I have to do is just drag and drop it in there. And again, that's my library here. I'm just gonna left click, drag in the log over here or drag it into the on-air sequencer here and you're good to go. Um, to help us out, I know obviously it's all different vocabulary. Just to clarify, when you mean stream, you mean this right here, the on-air product, right? If that's the case, we should definitely uh, you know use that kind of sequencer on-air, whatever it is. Or whatever you know and then we can definitely 100% drag and drop it in wherever we want I'll text you um, very easy Mitchell very normal all that stuff uh, and glad you're coming over thank you um, let's see here yep Josh saying drag and drag and drop you guys are the best um, let's see Corey that's more of the system hardware than our browsers and that's a new issue correct yes um, can you explain a bit more about the news that a remote client um, so Josh, the Zeta remote client is, I'm going to jump back here to where I was beforehand. The Zeta remote client is going to be essentially that of the next gen remote studio. And it, it's going to be essentially, um, think of Zeta proper without the on air sequencer. That's the best way to describe it. So again, if we have, um, Zeta remote studio, it's a way to have those extra tools that are in, in Zeta proper versus Zeta to go. I always tell users, don't forget, Zeta to go is not meant to replace Zeta proper. It's made to enhance your Zeta experience. It just so happens that Corona swooped in and we all have to go and work from home these days, which is great because we're like, okay, fine, you Zeta to go. We've been doing this. I've been preaching this for like two years now. Um, and, you know, so, but certain things like, you know, some people calling about, you know, missing audio reports, that's something that comes up. Um, there's also people asking for the multi-track editor that have that, um, or, or just some multi-site voice tracking tools. If you're one of those very advanced configurations, they need that access to the multi-site voice tracker. If you're one of those, we highly encourage you to get Zeta Remote Studio because you can have essentially Zeta proper. It just you know doesn't have the on-air sequencer because you can't control two different sources with that delay. It's just not going to work. So that's Zeta Remote Studio. That's what that is over there. And again, you can see here from a very colorful, uh, shout out to Jeff Sigler, uh, who helped uh, make this up. And by the way, I can't forget Di and Corey are on the, uh, the stream as well. They're helping me out, answer some questions. So if you see Di or Corey on there, I believe uh, Di is answering as RCS Sound Software. Um, they're answering questions there too. So thank you guys, shout out to you guys. 
Um, and you can see here, so for Z Remote Studio, it does remote audio loading, audition, production, simple audio production, advanced audio production. That's going to be essentially the uh, multi-track editor access. You can still voice tracks and that across as well. Uh, and then you can adjust the log. So any log changes are done sent automatically um, in there too. And so again, think of Zeta Remote Studio as Zeta proper without access to the on-air sequencer and the on-air module. Make sense? Um, going key down my list, Kyle. Uh, yeah, so Kyle, I'll definitely, um, Kyle was asking for uh, Zeta Cloud based disaster recovery. Do we just contact the normal sales number and buy from info? Absolutely. Uh, I'll make a point, Kyle. I'll, I'll direct message you too to make sure where you are. Or unless you want to comment, I can tell you and put you in touch whoever your local sales representative is here, and we'll get you up running on there too. Uh, and don't forget, Kyle, um, there's also, um, I'm trying to figure out the best way, I think I put it in here. Um, we have a new uh, package going on. As I said, we have Zeta Remote Studio. That's going to be on there for you. Um, but we also have a, a deal here. If you get Zeta Cloud-based disaster recovery, we're also going to include one free Zeta to go seat, which is these days very, very coveted for, uh, for your staff. I'm going to pull up. Where is the, uh, I believe, I thought this was it. Open this up here. Oh. That's the one. I'm gonna open this picture for you guys. This is what we're uh, we're sending out here right now. Let you guys know. Um, that loads up. I'll keep going on my list. Um, Tom Cox, yes, give Safari a try. Let us know. Hey, Adrian. Um, Kyle, boom, that works. Okay, yep, that's me. Um, <laughs> yes, Corey. Yeah, you and I are are. I would say you're more than pretty good. Um, Let's machine the most doing comparison to Zeta workstation license. Um, hey, so Josh is asking essentially what's the difference, uh, price difference between machine and remote studio in comparison to a full Zeta workstation license. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'll be honest, I'm not the numbers guy, um, but I do can tell you that there is a, a significant price difference, but also we wanted to price the remote studio in regards to um, budget friendly um, users. So just so you know, I wanna show not this one, I wanna show the other one. The other image I have over here to show you kind of uh, what we're doing here in Zeta Cloud-based disaster recovery. Um, okay, so I think I got, I finally got caught up on my comments, which is great. Hey, Andrew, good day from Australia. How's it going? Thank you for checking in. Um, all right, so let's do kind of a brief recap here and talk about, you know, what we're doing and here is RCS and all that good stuff. Um, so yeah, we were saying earlier, we're going to be here twice a week. Next one's gonna be Tuesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. That's gonna be a floating session, either Monday or Tuesday, probably. Um, we wanna make sure we encompass our friends over in Europe and of course, Australia, like Andrew. Um, and uh, from there too, we're gonna to do uh, every Thursday is be fixed at 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, and as you can tell, I'll just kind of dictate whatever, you know, I have some stuff to talk about and things to show you. But if we get a lot of these great questions, I will gladly go and, you know, do a little uh, pivot and uh, talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, also, like for example here, just letting you know, like Bri was talking about some examples um, and other things there too. I'll be more than happy after this is over. I'll go through the entire comment section. I'm going to respond to you guys and make sure that if you have any kind of specific workflows, um, you and I can talk about them offline and make sure you get up and running up to speed, all that good stuff. I uh, want to talk about remote workflows with cloud playout RCS disaster recovery. Again, for as little as $99 a month, we have our Zeta Cloud-based disaster recovery. And if you sign up now, we get a free Zeta to go license. And don't forget the license is a seat, right? So if you do have, let's just say five people looking to voice track, that's five users. They all can go and they can all log in and handle um, you know, the voice tracking, adding audio, all of that good stuff. So that Zeta to go license is really, it's, it, it's a nice, nice perk there. And of course, we just had a client, as I said yesterday, who got hit with cryptoware. They're looking for backups right now and, and struggling. You know, there you go. How's this? Friendly reminder, back up your stuff. And I, I jokingly text my friends yesterday. That includes your Outlook emails, right? Um, your, your G selector, your selector, your Zeta. Make sure your backups are working. It's just a friendly reminder. Let's be honest. It's just a friendly reminder to back up your stuff. So in case you're wondering, there's your daily reminder for you. Wash your hands, take backups, all that good stuff. Um, but we had a user who had crypto locked. 
um, all of their information. If you have Zeta Cloud based disaster recovery, again, logs, metadata, audio, SQL backups all get sent to the cloud. You enable it on your phone. When you're done, you restore your system, you take that backup from the cloud, and you're good to go. That includes, by the way, when you're using Zeta Cloud based automation. That includes um, all of you can add new audio, you can voice track, you can control the station. It's very similar to that of um, Zeta to go. And uh, while I continue to answer more questions, I will see if I can't log on here. Um, I do know that when I have two sources and I have, well, it's actually three sources because I have my Zoom also recording my audio and my Facebook open. And when I go to US Cloud, uh, sometimes it likes to uh, take its two time here. So let's go and look at more comments. <laughs> oh, Josh, from Australia too. Hello, Josh, thanks. Um, Yep, thank you. Thank you very much, Corey, for that that blog there post. Tony from Thailand. That's a new one, Tony. Thank you for checking in. We appreciate it. What, what time is it over there in Thailand? I have no idea. Um, I just want to show you here. Is that a cloud-based asset recovery pretty quick? Um, and, and, and this is great. So as I said, you know, I'll, I'll take this conversation wherever you want it to. Um, it's just a matter of getting things loaded and all that good stuff. So... Um, so this is Zeta Cloud, so people have not seen this yet. This is um, our Splash login page. Again, it's a, it's a URL, it's not an app. I know earlier in this conversation, I think it was might have been Josh was talking about what they can do in regards to um, in, in a, an iPad app for Zeta to go. And one of the things that I was pointing out was you don't want an app because it gives you more flexibility to access it anywhere. Um, so there's other options there too. So I just want to briefly show you the Zeta Cloud as this loads up over here. Um, essentially, you'll see it's very, very, very similar to Zeta to go. I have modules open here. There is my on-air sequencer. You can see I have the mode I can change. I have the stop current, play next. I have play, pause, stop, chains. That's all in there too. I have my playlist on the bottom left. That's where I am right now. In the bottom right, I have our library. And just some things here you might notice, like for example, the library is white. The reason it's white right here is because, don't forget, this is truly, it's not a virtual machine on a server somewhere. This is literally Zeta Cloud Automation written for Amazon Web Services with the security and protocols of AWS. So this is written for that, on that, not a VM. And by doing so, obviously it takes bandwidth and you have to load certain things. So that's what we want to make for the best optical performance. What we do is for the playlist, we only load one hour at a time. You can still cycle through to the next ones, but we only ask for the first hour because I don't want to load and download 24 seven worth of logs. Same thing applies to my library. If I don't have to see any of the songs in the library, I don't want to waste my bandwidth and my performance on the library. But if I do want to see it, I just click songs and it will pop right up. Very, very simple, very efficient. Um, and so you can see here, as I keep going, <laughs> we've turned, what was what what that Big Bang Theory with the, it's a podcast about flags, right? I feel like that's what our, our comment section has turned into over here. Uh, but you can see obviously in the library, um, this we have for the library in regards to Zeta Cloud. If I double click on, let's just say seven years, you're gonna see again, the very, very similar window in regards to the song properties, the active stations, the title, the marks, the extra, the station data, that's all in here as well. Again, a very, very powerful tool um, because if you want to essentially, you know, continue to broadcast during an emergency, you have all the access here. We can still drag and drop audio. We can set the marks over here and with the extra tabs, we can import music from here. Uh, I believe we can also drag and drop as well. That's in here too. So you can see everything is here. I have station data that I can also access. That's in there as well if I actually go to my RCS hot AC. And again, a very powerful tool and it's written for the cloud. Um, and I will gladly tease on this right here. Uh, don't forget, we jokingly for years, we've been saying that it's Zeta cloud-based disaster recovery. Phase one of RCS cloud is going to be cloud-based disaster recovery. That's what we introduced last year at NAB. Uh, we've been talking about it for a while. And uh, we're currently working on, I can't tell you specifics, but I can definitely tell you that, you know, phase two of this is Zeta Cloud Automation. That's phase two. I'll let you interpret that the way you want to interpret that, but just know that, you know, I always joke around, you know, 
being you know RCS being the worldwide leader in radio software when this all went down you know people called us up and they were like hey we need Zeta to go and it was funny because half the users were like oh I'll just use Zeta to go and we're good and that's exactly what we wanted that to happen and other people were like oh I need more seats it was great you need more seats you need more users um, absolutely reach out to your local sales rep and we can add those it's actually pretty easy for the most part we just got to change some numbers on our end relicense it and boom you have more access to Zeta to go that's in there too um so yeah very very helpful there but again zeta cloud right here very similar to zeta to go treat zeta cloud like its own market if i have let's say my station in danbury connecticut and then i have my zeta cloud any changes that are done in danbury connecticut on the file server or on the local machine gets automatically replicated to that of zeta cloud that's in there too um fun with flags yes thank you doc fun with flags that's what it is um, all right, so we still got people in here. I've been talking about Zeta Cloud. We went to Zeta to go, talked about that. Um, talking about again, we're this is our product list we have here. Um, in case in case you're just jumping in right now, uh, I push and RCS Remote are both for our next gen products. Those are OSX only, so those are from the App Store only for Mac products. Um, if you want any kind of um, uh, documentation, I can send it to you. I got a lot of PDFs. Um, you want to probably focus on RCS Remote. That's probably one you could gear towards. The iPush just really sends audio. The RCS Remote allows you to voice track and then control and manipulate the log over here. Next Gen Remote Studio is essentially Next Gen proper without the on-air sequencer, which is very similar to that of the Zeta Remote Studio, which is brand new, just so you know. Um, that is brand new. It's a package we created for uh, the current times. Um, and that is essentially um, Zeta proper without the on-air sequencer as well. And then, of course, we have Selector to go, Zeta to go, Acquire to go. These run on PC, Mac, iPhone, Androids, whatever you want, any browser. That's on there. Uh, we were talking about earlier, just so you know, if you um, are a Mac user, you're going to want to use Safari. Uh, there was a change in the Mac OS. So if you are a Mac user, we recommend using Zeta to go and uh, Safari for that. Otherwise, you can go to your heart's content. Uh, and by the way, we do have some users who have Macs and are using Chrome with no issues. So it's just kind of environmental. It's, you know, all that stuff. Um, and then uh, for Selector to go, of course, we can always schedule our logs. We can change the logs, all that good stuff, especially with Zeta to go. And if you have Acquira and you're looking for Acquira to go, we just did a great video on Monday. Um, that's on our Facebook page here, as well as our RCS Works blog. You can check that out and talk about some Acquira to go stuff there, too. Um, and uh, I guess just briefly, I guess I haven't shown it yet, and I still have some people chiming in. I could show uh, my selector to go login here. I can definitely do that. Um, anybody have any other questions? You can always comment on here. Email rcsworks.com, live at rcsworks.com. Um, I'll direct message some people here too as well uh, and go from there. But I thought maybe we'll just show quickly some G selector to go and call it a day. Sounds good for everybody. Um, your selector to go. This utilizes your local Zeta login. Sorry, your local G selector logins. Okay, so I'm just going to put in here for me. I have administrator. Um, if you don't have your username and password, you don't know what it is. There is a good chance that it's administrator with no password. Just so you know, um, I didn't tell you that, but that's usually what it is because that's the default. Um, in here, there's my selector to go. I can choose my station from right here. I can pick my RCS hot AC because that's my normal station. You'll notice too that it's it's your uh, your path slash selector to go. Make a note that it's selector to go. Number two, G O S E L E C T O R to go. And you can find that information out by going over here, going to your help, going to the about section. And then you'll see right here, one of the third or fourth lines down, it's going to say your file server slash G selector. We don't need the slash G selector. All we need is just the server name and the slash. That's all we care about. So you can see there's my machine slash. All I care about is that first half right there. RCSWP dash N Mumford. That's my server. Of course, I'm on my laptop here. That's where everything resides. Um, that's gonna be your server slash. That's what we care about. If I go back over here to my Chrome, you can see there's a machine slash selector to go. One of the things that um, support want me to talk about was SSL uh, authentication and certificates. Um, for whatever reason, if you do have any kind of domain restrictions, you get a little pop-up that shows up and says, hey, do you want to trust this site? 
uh, let me know. I can send you some documentation on it. Um, it's actually very convenient. Uh, just download some certificates and you're good to go. Um, so you want to bypass that. We can definitely help you there too. Um, that's in there. And sometimes you might have to access, if you're on a VPN, you might have to access either the name of the machine or the IP address of the machine. That's all based on your network and your host files where you have configured. So just so you know, this could be an IP or machine name. As long as you can access it, I would say you're good to go. Um, from here, I have my station at the very top. I have my library, linker, clock, scheduler, editor, analysis tools, and logging out. That's my options here. I know I'm moving fast because it's kind of I want to show you some things. If you want more details, just message me. I can show you a lot more. I'm going to jump to the on-air button here because I have my G Selector live integrated with Zeta, which means any changes I make in Zeta get reflected in G Selector. Anything in G Selector reflected back in Zeta. So if I add a brand new song in Zeta and I change the name, that's in G Selector. If I go in G Selector to go and I go and change an asset in my editor, that's reflected back in Zeta proper as well. And you can see here that it respects the color schemes. If you're an older version of G Selector, I will say G Selector 4.7.1, we had a bunch of uh, selector to go enhancements, including clocks and linker. So if uh, also color schemes as well. So if you are a uh, pre 471 G selector user, you're gonna wanna go and upgrade that accordingly because that's gonna get you the most recent um, best features in G selector. Um, let's see here, going to the questions, Josh was saying, jo geez, Josh, that was quick. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Got VSTs working in the Zeta editor, found the instructions in the help file. Um, I don't think you can automate them on the IVTs. There is some respect in regards to, we're going to do a quick little jump here for Josh. He's talking about, um, uh, internet voice tracker and talking about processing associated with them. Um, I don't believe there's anything automatic on that end, but if you do save your voice tracks on Zeta to go, when they get loaded into Zeta proper, they then respect the voice track on Zeta proper. That includes ducking, the trim in, the trim out. Um, the segue point obviously is not saved because that's based on the transition of the voice track, but we will do trim in, trim out, and ducking in regards to uh, Zeta proper. So I don't think that's an automated process on the VST, but I'll look into it and let you know. Um, I do know there's some third party, um, uh, third party products out there that can help you in regards to that. Again, I'll look into it. Um, and then uh, the episode was saying, can you send me some documentation by passing giving details? Yes. Um, so uh, Tabiso was asking, can you send some documentation on bypassing and giving detailed explanation on access to the goes? I absolutely can. In fact, um, I thought I saved this. I might have to go. I'll, I'll gladly show you guys from here because it's in there. I'm going to go to rcsworks.com. That's obviously our homepage, all that good stuff. You might notice in the very top section, there is a blog. Um, and by the way, if uh, Corey and Di are listening, I'm just looking for that, um, our main, uh, yeah, the main the main uh, remote workflow is one that we did uh, two weeks ago. Um, I'm gonna comment it on here too. The blog that's here. So again, we go to rcsworks.com, go into the blog, and we have this kind of our, our daily updates of things that are going on in RCS, um, different examples, um, you know, different things we've done. And this one here, I believe, is the one I'm looking for. And yes, this is the one. So I'm going to put this here for you. And post that. That's going to be the link. So what you're going to see here is essentially this is setting up your G Selector server. Okay. And then from here, this is your Zeta file server. And if you have a choir, that's in there too as well. So those are the big two ones, selector to go, Zeta file server. Um, I'll post on here. If you wanna download the certificates, hold on, I know I have this on my my Teams, but I had my Teams logged out here. Let me go here, boom, boom, boom. Shout out to Renell and RCS support. I was joking around earlier before of what things we can post. Uh, that's gonna be this, H, where? HTTPS slash slash. I'm putting this here for you. Uh, it's localhost um, slash trust to go. Trust to go. 
So that's going to be your certificates to bypass any certificates in case you need them. Um, obviously, what you're going to go to that link. There's two options. There's two. Um, there is a CA and an SSL certificate. Um, you want to download both those certificates. You know, apply them, and that should bypass that. Of course, if there's any VPN issues, that's on your end. That's all of your local network. We don't trust. Uh, trust. We don't touch your local network. That is on you, all those domain restrictions and all that stuff. So if you need help with some VPN, unfortunately, that's going to be for you. Anything RCS oriented, we'll be more than happy to help out. Uh, again, uh, shout out to RCS support. If you have questions in here outside of maybe me answering them on the fly on Facebook, you can always reach out support at rcsworks.com as well as 914-259-4900. Um, that's the support line. Again, 914-259-4900 or just support rcsworks.com. Both of them work for you. And uh, we have, we're fully staffed, um, you know, looking to help you out there too. So if you got any questions, definitely let them know. They can help you out, point you in the right direction on there too. Um, so hopefully a uh, tapestry that answers your question. Um, th am I saying that right? I'm sorry if I'm going to butcher that your name. I really do apologize. Um, and so we did that article we're talking about. Oh. Uh, G selector here again. Anything done in here is going to be reflect, uh, reflected in my Zeta experience. If I jump to the scheduler too, there's an option to export my schedule. Um, so if you have your automation system, we can configure that with support to make that work for you too. I also got library, linker, clocks, just ways I can go and essentially do my day-to-day -day operations. Uh, but don't forget too. Uh, G Selector client is very, very flexible. If you're going to be, you know, at home on your laptop working all the time, I personally recommend utilizing uh, the G Selector client and just using your VPN. Because obviously, if you have Selector to go, you know, it, it's Selector Go is really more of on the fly doing things. Where if you have a G Selector client, it's more of a stable environment. Uh, I'll use this for example. If I am personally here in my house, but I'll say that my G Slicker server was that in, in New York at our White Plains headquarters. What I would do is I would have a VPN because obviously I got to connect to my files anyway back in, the, back in the studio. I would go and have a VPN, install my G Slicker as normal. Obviously, if my VPN is turned off, I won't be able to connect to my G Slicker. It will just sit and wait. So once the VPN is connected, you're writing your files as normal live in real changes. So that's what I recommend doing. If you're like at lunch or you're traveling for whatever reason, though you're not supposed to be traveling right now, but for the future, and you're on your phone, yeah, Selector to Go is great because you just jump in with the VPN, boom, hammer it out, and you're good to go. So think of Selector to Go as a little more mobile, uh, a little more flexible, but if you're in a more stable environment where you have a home office, I recommend doing the G Selector client with that of a VPN. And if you have, let's say, multiple markets, I know that's happening too, unfortunately, these days. If you have multiple stations, multiple markets, you need to access them. Don't forget tools, servers. If I click on here, there's two options. The first one here is remote service hosts. These are essentially your other markets. So when you first log in to G Selector, what you wanna do is essentially choose which market you're going to access. So Again, keeping it simple, I'll just say I have New York, I have Connecticut. I can go and open my G Selector and say, open my New York market or open my Connecticut market. And again, all you need is a VPN to access that data and you're good to go. So if you are a market manager and you're looking to access multiple markets, what I recommend doing is going to, again, tools. I'll close this right here. Again, tools, servers, remote service hosts, okay? I would just add a brand new one. All you need is whatever you want to call it in the description and the IP address. That's what you need. Have those two pieces of information, access data as normal. I can go and work on each station with the kind of enterprise aspect here. So I can switch between all the stations here. And if I wanted to, I go to file, connect to remote service host, click that. And that's going to give me an access to which database am I looking to achieve after that. And it's going to load up in a second here to show you give you a choice of which one you want to open up. Um, all right, I'm doing a final call for questions here.
Yeah, so Kyle, Kyle is asking, uh, how do you change the theme in G-Star? I like that color. Um, of course, I just closed it. I should have read that first. Um, open this back up here. Um, yeah, so it's uh, under, I can do it from my head here. Tools, global settings, uh, then go to appearances. And there's a third sub tab there called theme, if I'm not mistaken. So tools. Um, global uh, global settings, global appearances, then the appearances tab, and then uh, theme from there. Uh, and just be aware. Yep, I know. Um, and then so uh, I'll show it to you one more time here. That's available, if not mistaken. I thought it was 471. It's 100% on 480. So if you have 480 and the latest and greatest, you can definitely. By the way, this is where I'm talking about that service host connection. There's default AWS machine that I have there. And by the way, that is a true Amazon Web Service. Um, so if you did want to have more of a cloud aspect of G Selector, um, we take more of the traditional approach where we have G Selector installed on a VM. And of course, you can access that VM wherever it is, as long as a VPN and direct access to it as well. So if you do want to have more of a cloud-based solution for G Selector, um, you would just install G Selector on a VM. Uh, we do have some clients that do that currently, just so you know. So if you are interested in having more of a cloud-based G selector, um, that would be a VM on the uh, Amazon Web Service instance. Um, I'll show this to Kyle. Again, uh, last call for questions if anyone wants them in. Uh, I know I've been rambling here for about an hour, um, but you guys have had some great questions. So as I said, we'll do this again um, Tuesday at 2 p.m. I think that's going to be the goal. We'll create an invite for that one so everybody knows exactly what time it's going to be. And then we'll do every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. That's going to be locked. And we're going to do this for the next foreseeable future. Like we're going to pretty much, just, I think, just going to keep on doing it. Um, it's just efficient. We want to make sure that with all this craziness going on, we want to make sure that you guys know that you know we're here to help you out, answer any questions, solve some workflows for you. And again, just be here. So if you do have questions or concerns, you can always reach out to me, to Di, to Corey, and we'll answer your questions for you. And if you do want to just jump in, you can't have access to watch the entire video, we can definitely go and help you out. We'll direct message you if you want, or we can go and um, you know respond to live at rcsworks.com. That's an email, all that good stuff. Kyle, for you, uh, how to change the themes in G Selector. Tools, global settings, click on that. Um, and then you'll see here under appearances, style. I was close. I got style. So again, tools, global settings, appearances, style, and you can change all of your elements from here. Uh, one of my personal favorites um, is, uh, where is it here? Is pumpkin. Uh, all you have to do, there's no save option, just close it. We do recommend if you're changing a theme to when you're done, close all of G Selector and reopen it back up um, just because it gives everything proper organization. But if you're, uh, if you're entertained like me, um, you can see here there is actually a hidden pumpkin theme on there in which you have your skull and crossbones are for your attributes, which is just delightful. There's also a Valentine's Day theme too if you're interested in that too. <laughs> just because it's the themes we had available. But if you want a nice, entertaining, uh, very metal approach to your G Selector, there's your skull and crossbones. Um, okay, a couple last minute questions here. Um, yep. Hey, Meg. Uh, Kyle, thanks so much for the information with process. Yeah, so Kyle, we got a lot of videos for you. I'll, I'll, I'll direct message you and we'll talk about some videos. Um, I, I, as you can tell, Meg, I style with skull and bones, um, but I just like my dark mode. Um, okay, I think that's one last final call for questions and comments and all of that good stuff. Again, um, we'll teach, uh, reach back out on next Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern time, always locked in at Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. If you have any questions, you can always comment, direct message us, um, and we'll help you answer any questions you may have, any workflows. And if you did comment, I have a whole bunch of comments here. I will gladly go and respond to each of these individually and let you know what we can do to help out over here as well. Um, if this will load. Um, finally, we have the remote workflows with cloud playout RCS disaster recovery. Just give me a final heads up. We do have new packages available for the um, Zeta Remote Studio. That's going to be essentially Zeta proper without the on air sequencer. And then we also have um, if you get Zeta cloud based disaster recovery for as little as $99 a month, 
you can sign up now and get one free Zeta to go license, which by the way translates to a seat. So if you do have multiple users, especially during these times that are fighting over seats, it's a great, great tool. And it's, uh, I think you're gonna find that between the um, Zeta Cloud rate as well as Zeta Go license, it really is just such a great, great, great feature and a great deal for you too. So um, I can't say enough good things about Zeta to Go and for your workflows and making sure that you you and your staff are safe. Um, all right, so I'm gonna sign out over here. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you Tuesday at 2 p.m. Um, be safe out there, wash your hands, floss. I don't know, take backups of your email and your G selector and your Zeta database, all that CDC stuff. I really hope you're safe and everybody's treating you well and the quarantine is uh, doing good for you too. So cheers, I got my coffee and I'm gonna finish from this morning and I'll see you next week. Have a good one, bye-bye.